Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Online Chats. My name is Diane Cohen, and today I have Linda Van Dillen, who is the Vice President of Communication and a registered nurse for Comp Alliance. Hi, Linda. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's a real, I'm hoping a fun thing to do, so it sounds great. Excellent. Well, I understand that you are on the board of the International Association of Industrial Accidents. And I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about what it is that you uh, have learned from them. Yes. Um, actually, I'm not on the board, but I am an editor for their magazine that comes out on a quarterly basis. Now, Linda, I understand from this organization, you learned a new phrase about what we consider claimants. Can you tell me what it is that you, uh, the terminology that you are now using? Yes, we're transitioning over to the term recovering worker. And you can see on my banner behind me, we have our little mascot there uh, superimposed in white. He's our recovering worker. He's you know, happy, his arms are up in the air. He's he's ready and ready to get back to work, ready for recovery. I think that's really a great idea because oftentimes we are so busy in what we do every single day that we forget to look at somebody as a person, that we that we are charged with making them whole, but all oftentimes we have so much work we have to do that we're trying to check the boxes dot the I's, cross the T's. So I think that's really a phenomenal way for a company to be looking at you know, their patients. Can you tell me something else that you might have found very beneficial to your company that you've learned from this board? Well, one of the things we do at our annual conference is they actually have people from all different countries. At the last one, which was fascinating, they had someone that was from Russia and he taught us um, about their work comp system. And it was surprising how open it was. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting you will get better or else, but it wasn't that. It was, it was, it was very collaborative and I was very impressed with it. They, that was one of the ones that stood out, but we had people from maybe four or five different countries. We have Germany and Canada there really every time. Oh, that's lovely. It's really nice to be able to get a broader sense of what's happening and to collaborate with other people. Let's talk a little bit about what's happening with COVID-19 and what we think is happening as far as treatments are concerned and what nurse case managers are now up against, because we're starting to see those cases come in more and more. Well, I mean, honestly, anything I tell you today will probably be out of date by tomorrow, okay? But um, in general, I think that we just all have to really um, talk about focusing on the safety of both the case managers and the people out in the field, the um, recovering worker and the physician too. So if we can work up a program where all of us are able to collaborate and still um, ensure that that recovering worker continues with treatment and rehabilitation, but then we also get the information that we need um, to uh, facilitate their care and approval of their care, then I think we're winning. During the coronavirus, we've all had to re-pivot one way or another. What would you say the biggest challenge has been for you and your company to be able to communicate not only with the injured worker, the doctor, but now your client that needs to get these reports? Well, that's been a that's been an interesting thing too because we've had um, you know we first started out we were calling people on the phone and and I think they were being called by so many different people at once they were like oh my goodness you know I I, I can't talk anymore right now and so we had to find new ways to communicate we've always um, had a um, an online virtual presence so we could get reports to them in a very timely way. But to actually call and communicate with our um, clients, we've um, done some, I guess, some things where we'll send out little care packages. We, we got these Comp Alliance cootie keys and we sent those out to our clients and just something that they could use to open doors without touching the handles and, um, you know, we've had some, we actually had hand sanitizer that we had purchased for our upcoming conferences. So we were able to send some of that out to just to kind of show them that we care about them too. It's not just the recovering worker, 
it's really all of us together. Sometimes it's just those littlest things that we do that may seem minute to us, but could be really large to the injured worker. I think one of the most important things that nurse case managers do is make sure that the injured worker gets everything that they're entitled to. When you talk to the injured worker and you explain this to them, what is the reaction that they have? Because I'm sure oftentimes they feel like the insurance companies don't care. But when you give that message, it shows something different. Well, you know, statistics show that nurses are one of the most trusted people in the country. Okay. So that helps us right there a little bit. We do have to come overcome that hurdle of that we're hired by the insurance company. But we also explain to them uh, right up in front what their rights and responsibilities are and how we handle their data. But then we also talk to them from day one about their goals and what they think they're going to accomplish. Because if we find that we have someone that says right up front, I don't think I'm ever going to go back to work, then that's someone that we have to work with very carefully and um, I guess look at more options and um, how to overcome those barriers. And so we work with them from day one. We really help that doctor focus on return to work, but not in a way like get them back to work no matter what, but talking about return to work and talking about treatment options and alternatives and what's appropriate for treatment so that they, um, we have instituted what we call shared decision making. And so we include that recovering worker from day one in their treatment plan, if at all possible, that we can um, help them make treatment decisions during the, the time that they're in treatment with our uh, physician that we're working with. Oh, I think that's fantastic. They really do need a voice and feel like they have a say in their recovery. In closing, I would like to discuss the COVID-19 and how it is affecting the injured worker psyche, having to deal with more psychological issues because, you know, they they may be getting better, but they can't go back to work or they don't want to go back to work because they're afraid that they may get uh, infected by the virus. You know, there's just so many aspects to this coronavirus that can play on somebody's mind. I think we're all experiencing that, not just the recovering workers. And so, um, you know, we're having a hard time focusing in general, I think, sometimes and losing focus. I mean, I've, I've heard about and read about everybody gaining 20 pounds since coronavirus started um, in this country. And so I think if we can keep them focused on from day one on their rehabilitation, and then um, at the same time, we, we actually have another program. It's an alternative transitional duty program. And so we've actually been very successful in placing recovering workers that can't get back to their normal duties in this as a temporary transitional program that also helps them to keep in that return to work mindset. And so we're, we're, we're using that very successfully with our recovering workers. Well, Linda, I'd like to thank you so much for being my guest today, for sharing your knowledge, uh, the different programs and the association that you belong to. It is fantastic to always speak with you and to be with you. Um, we miss you as far as being as part of our speakers at Macro Pro and Friends. I'm certain that one day soon we will see each other face to face again. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the next episode of Online Chats.